be forced to do so. Thanks, Senator Raj. Uh, okay, Deputy Barry Barrett. Uh, Ambassador, I, I will say frankly, I'm one of the people who thinks you should be expelled from this country, and uh, I believe that uh, that's nothing to do with you personally. Uh, it's to do with the policies of your state. And uh, I think, uh, along with Desmond Tutu, that the time for treating you as a normal state is over because you're not behaving as a normal state. And um, I just want to ask you questions, really, in relation to that uh, contention. And I would just say for the record, uh, uh, it certainly isn't motivated by anti-Semitism in my case. I mean, for, for, for example, when uh, disgraceful attempts were being made to downplay the horrors of the Holocaust by people like David Irving. I brought a Jewish Auschwitz survivor to this city to organize meetings and get her on national television to remind the Irish people about the horrors of the Holocaust. And I would do so again if anybody tried to downplay the horrors of what were done to the Jewish people. But it is precisely because I'm opposed to racism that I oppose what your state is doing and what it stands for. So I just want to ask you a few questions. Uh, in relation to that. And I should also say, by the way, I lived for a year on Moshav Neot Hakikar in the Dead Sea uh, in 1987, two weeks before the first Intifada broke out. That leads me to my first question. You have tried to cover over what uh, you have done, the killings of innocent people in Gaza and three separate occasions over recent years, the seizure of Palestinian land and so on, by attacking Hamas. Now, why don't you just uh, admit that Hamas didn't exist when the first Intifada took place? They didn't set up an armed wing until the early 1990s. Uh, and that there was a reason that PLO were in Tunis at the time, exiled, effectively uh, not present. But the ordinary Palestinians rose up because you denied them basic rights. I lived there. It was apartheid, it was racism, it was endemic, it was rotten. Absolutely, I was shocked within weeks of living there to see how you treated Palestinian people. And isn't it the fact that the law of return, which is the basic law of the Israeli state, is a racist apartheid law because it confers rights on Jews that it denies to Palestinians? Uh, it allows, for example, if I was Jewish and had never stepped foot in Israel, I could claim citizenship there tomorrow, but six million people whose origins are in what you now call Israel, who were forced out in 1947 or 48, do not have that right. Isn't that part of the reason why the Palestinians are in dispute with Israelis? Because you deny them the right to return to their homes and to their land and to their villages, and that they have a legitimate uh, claim, even under international law, to return, but you deny them that right. Why do you deny them that right? And why do you give that right to other people who have no connection whatsoever with the land, whether you call it Israel or whether you call it Palestine? Uh, why do you continue to seize land, if you're serious about Oslo and the two-state solution, why do you continue to seize land which under that agreement is land designated to be Palestinian land? 500,000 people, most of which has taken place since Oslo. You allow that to happen. Why do you allow it to happen if you're serious about giving this land to the Palestinians? Uh, it's absolutely extraordinary. Uh, and it just, you, you must, are you not just taking us, uh, Ambassador, for idiots? That you can say with a straight face, we're serious about peace, but while we're serious about peace, we're going to seize Palestinian land. And you expect the Palestinians to sit back and do nothing about that. And the world to accept that that is, uh, an, acceptable, uh, is an acceptable way to behave. And you asked earlier on, what, could we have some constructive solutions? Um, now you know what the Palestinian people have been asking for. Far less even than uh, s some people would ask for. Because I believe the whole apartheid system should be dismantled. But what they've asked for is to lift the siege of Gaza. Just to lift the siege of Gaza. Let them have an airport. Let them have uh, ports. Let them not be dictated to by a government for whom they do not vote as to what can go in and out of their territories, whether they will have power, whether they will have clean water, whether they will have medicine. What makes you think you're allowed to have nuclear weapons and the fourth biggest army in the world and visit destruction on the, the people of Gaza but they have no right to defend them. 
themselves. They have no territorial Mr. sovereignty could I, could over I, that, yes. that land. Would you ask questions, please? Have they they their own, how do you justify that? Yeah. All right. How do you justify those uh, double standards? And very lastly, uh, very lastly, Ambassador, uh, people like uh, Bishop Tutu, Nelson Mandela, and I would certainly subscribe, uh, describe your state as a uh, apartheid state with different laws for people depending on their race or religion. Uh, now, isn't that just the case that, for example, at checkpoints going into the West Bank, there's a channel if you're Israeli or European, and there's a channel if you're Arab. Just because you're Arab. If you came into Dal Aaron and they stopped you and said, are you Jewish? Oh no, sir, you can't come in through the same entrance uh, as Irish people or European people because you're Jewish. You would call that racism and apartheid. But yet, you practice that. You practice that with your checkpoints and your military okay. uh, barriers and your apartheid wall. How can you justify that? All right, thank you. Last, uh, 